everybody. I'm in COVID isolation and I've decided it's time to fix my emotator. It's not uh, turning when you push the button anymore. The indicator is not turning with the antenna. The antenna is still turning fine. So I did some basic tests. You pull off the back connector here. You can check. I haven't much lead here, but let's let's over it up to see. Across pins four, five, and six is where you find the potentiometer that is located in the in the rotor. So if you go across with your DVM. So you guys can see that. Just get 500 ohms. Across the potentiometer. So there's 581. It's 600 ohm uh, potentiometer. According to the schematic I have. That I found on the web. And if you go across, of course from your wiper to one side, you're going to see one resistance. And the wiper to the other side, you will see the other half of your resistance or whatever makes up your 600 ohms or so that you see across the two of them. Now if you want to make sure the potentiometer is not the fault, move the antenna around and make sure that uh, this changes. I'm not going to demonstrate it now because I just lined up the antenna where it matches what the indicator is on, on this. But if you hold your uh, DVM here, get a measurement. See, so I see 355 ohms now across these two pins, which on, on this one right now are, oh, that's the wiper and one side. So between four and five, I had that resistance. Plug it back into your, your uh, mover here and move your antenna. Uh, let it go a, a fair bit because you know you're only 600 ohms you know was that about two ohms per degree so you, you want to move it a fair bit so you get to get a, a good difference in the reading. So if you swung it around 180 degrees and make another measurement and see that your resistance dropped. Well, I don't know what that's going to come out to but you know probably uh, 300 ohms right so give or take depending on where where you were uh, on your thing, it'll, it'll be a change in that. But you want to see a change. You're not worried about the ohms or anything. Just as long as you see that it is changing, then you know your, your potentiometer is good up there. So, what I did is I took it apart. Because I, I read that, of course, my, my potentiometer was moving like it should. So I did the four feet at the bottom. And then there's the plate on the back. I uh, had to undo that. And one other plate that uh, there's a rod attached to that holds the front from moving around. It's just a little piece of metal which I have hidden somewhere around here. But anyways, uh, I mean it comes off. It, it comes in here, out to here. And it's just another little, little chrome screw that you take off. Anyway, so all, all to say that uh, I took it apart, and the problem was to use a friggin' rubber band in here to move your gears around. This was around this motor here, and across that big flywheel down there. So now, what I'm going to have to do is loosen this off enough here. I'll probably just loosen these two screws out because there's a shaft here you got to get around. That shaft, which is in in here holding this gear in, so you just can't drop a rubber band down in there and pull it up. You're going to have to get it around that post somehow, which means hopefully not exploding everything in there. I hate doing that. But uh, anyway, so that's the problem. Now to find, you know, next is to find something that's going to be roughly the right size. I don't know, maybe one of these is from an antique radio. It might work. 
Otherwise, I'll, I don't know, just find an elastic band or something that I can cut down to size. Anyways, I'm not going to let you watch me struggle through the gearing shit. I uh, will do that, and uh, once I, I got one on there, uh, all I'm going to do, like I said, I'm just going to do these. Hold this with my finger, allow this to c come out, and slip a, an elastic there. So if that works, that's what I might tell you. I'll let you know after I get it undone. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, everybody. Moment of truth. I finally got that elastic back on. I undid the bottom screw here too so the faceplate comes off, give you a little bit of access. Not a whole lot from the underside too. Why I'm using a bunch of dental tools. Trying to get elastics around in there. I taped the old one to the back of this so I have a reference of what size it was in the future because uh, the one I used was actually a little black a rubber elastic that I cut in half uh, lengthwise on it to thin it out a bit. That came around wrapped around a uh, I don't know something like an AC adapter or something. So it's kind of a thick rubber. Hopefully it'll last. Let's turn it on. Not moving because hey, probably have to have this plugged in. So and yeah, it's already started to spin. So it's spun up to uh, find the proper position of the antenna. Now we've got direction again, so. Looks like that elastic's going to hold all right. It's spinning around in there. I don't know how well you can see that. I dropped this off right at. Oop. Anyways, I imagine you can see that. Been in. I'll just drop this in a little bit closer. You can see what actually happens in there. So there's where the elastic band is, and that motor just causes all those gears to turn. So hopefully it'll stay in place. I'm just going to leave that at zero. Uh, not at zero, but it's due south, and go out and see where my antenna is pointed. See if I have to calibrate that all. When I was doing this, the uh, the direction needle pop right off. Uh, so all I'm going to do to calibrate it is make sure my antenna is pointed south. If it's not, I'm going to move the antenna until it's pointed south, and I'm just going to pop that needle off and put it back in. I know you can uh, with the potentiometer at the back. I think here is used to calibrate the the antenna too. So. We'll see if that works for me just doing that or not. Anyways, hopefully that'll last for a while. It's uh, that rotor there is probably 45 years old, give or take, maybe 40, something somewhere around there. It was a hand-me-down from my from my dad to me, and it's been in my shack for 25 plus years. So, anyways, guys. Uh, Good luck in fixing yours if you have any problems with it. 73. So my antenna was off about, what are we here, we're at like 100 and maybe 200, 200 and something degrees. <clears throat> and that's probably because fiddling around with the gears when I was putting the elastic on. So like I said, that just popped off and I'm going to push it back on so that it's south there now everything's good I'll put it all back together and hopefully I'll be good for another 40 years and just another quick note guys when you're doing this 
I had this unplugged at the beginning I showed you where all this was but before I started to change it and pull all this apart I unplugged it because it, right here is where your hot wire comes in right on off so you want to don't need mucking around in here with it plugged into the wall so unplug it I'm not sure uh, I imagine you know that's going to be hot in here 110 volts I haven't really looked at the schematic to see but let's see on the switch yes on the schematic it shows that switch right on the hot so you don't want to be messing around in there with your fingers so uh, unplug it from the wall before you start uh, messing with the gears before you light yourself up